Hello, good sir. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing quite well. How are you? I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I was just cleaning up. Uh, this place was a mess the other day. Oh, man. So, it looks spick and span. Oh, Jeez. thanks, man. I appreciate it. I did. I was like, you know, I got to clean this place up for him. You know what I mean? I can't be having <laughs> this place tore up, you know? He thinks I'm some kind of swinger. I'm glad you did that. I'd be very distracted. I also, that's so much pressure to have a transparent glass cabinet because I usually cram shit in there it looks like i know glass, right man. yeah yeah it's all for show i don't even know what's in there <laughs> it, it all just came with the case really yeah <laughs> yeah yeah exactly same thing with the picture for uh frames i bought I just leave the picture in there. i don't change anything i go that looks great okay crap. <laughs> <laughs> they're smiling it's fine oh, yeah. well that's I, great I, Go I ahead. see you have like some sound panels in the back, but you only have like eight. Is that does that actually work? Well, I haven't got enough patrons on my Patreon, so huh. I I haven't saved up for enough. So I was gonna fill the whole wall, but they're very yeah. expensive. They are. How expensive are they? They are. Oh, I kind of forgot. They're not that expensive, but they're like they're pretty expensive. I've also got them on this side of the wall. So from what I read, is if you've got one on one side of the wall and then you have an empty space that's okay but then cover it up here on the other side and then have the empty space there because the the way the sound bounces off yeah. if you have the two spaces it'll bounce like this but if you have one padded side it'll just go and stop on one side oh wow so you don't need it because it's not it's not there's nothing going back ricocheting back really because you just got it all in the front that's what they say do i is that true i don't know the the parts that I, are, i'm having trouble with acoustically are huh. the corners because i will <laughs> this is sad and depressing but i'll go in different spots sometimes because i i hear an echo it's yeah. not it's not affected the podcast but if i if i come in live and i have multiple people in here uh -huh. I, i'll sit in the different chairs and i'll be like hey this is stefan and then i'll hear the echoes coming from the the corners oh wow so, who would have known the corners could be such a problem i don't know yeah no. everybody's cutting them nobody's paying attention to them yeah. uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it. anyway yeah. man it's it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the pod my name is stefan by the way i know it's yeah. spelled like steven but huh. um it's a, a pleasure to have you on Thank we'll you go me, dude i really appreciate it Oh man, I'm pleased as punch to have you. I also, Rose Verdugo, I don't know if you remember her. Yes. She referred me to you and I started seeing your stuff online. Yeah. And dude, you you tickled my funny bone to the max. Oh I, dude, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. As we, as we go farther into it, I'll talk more about it, but, uh, and my favorite bits, but she actually might be hopping on the pod to say oh, hi. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool um but Sweetheart. she said she said she might be late or she might not show up so we can go ahead and get started i am recording now because i want to make sure and get those little cold intro yeah, nuggets of course but this is a comedy advice podcast with me stefan satani this is where we talk about advice and there's a little bit of comedy sprinkled in yes so um i uh, i usually have a guest like yourself, we talk a little bit about you, and then fans send in questions that they find on the internet, and we answer them. Very oh, silly. Yeah. Perfect. So, um, I, uh, by the way, now that we're recording, I have my, uh, my intro for you, and uh -huh. for the audience that's so, that doesn't know what's going on, everybody, this special guest, he's an actor, writer, and comic. He's appeared on True TV, Hulu. He's blown up on TikTok, and he was in one of Bill Clinton's favorite commercials everybody please welcome steven briggs <laughs> yeah <laughs> Woo! shout Woo! out to bill <laughs> oh god i miss i miss bill you don't hear about old clinton anymore no but, uh, no you know i miss i hear I miss more about semen stain on that dress <laughs> than i hear about him it's crazy <laughs> i know it's uh you know I wish I wish I heard more about him, but it is what it is. But you know what? You know who I do want to hear about is Stephen Briggs, the one and only Stephen. 
It's uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on. And I want to talk a little bit about you and the multi, you're like a, a comedy octopus because you've got <laughs> your tentacles in, in all sorts of different areas. I feel like you really got it figured out too with, I'm a, an Instagram guy, so I'm on Instagram, but I also followed you on TikTok where you've got like 50,000 plus followers, YouTube, you've got it going on and you've got these these great little clips whether it's sketches like the uh <laughs> the bidet or oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> or or converting folks to mormonism or different <laughs> things like that or your your comedy which i feel like i have had so many comedians on my podcast and i've seen so many bits and so many specials and things but i feel like i don't know there's something with the briggs formula that just has oh me... bro, i appreciate that thank you so much absolutely man and i just wanted to ask how did you get into comedy what what caused the bug to bite you and, and infect yeah. you? uh so like i didn't know even comedy was like a thing i didn't know it existed like because my parents didn't let me watch tv or anything so i had no like like idea that there's even people going on stage telling jokes and getting paid for this like but like I come from like a family of storytellers. So everyone's like a pretty good storyteller in my family. And so my mom would dress me up a little sailor's outfit as a, when I was a kid and have me come out and uh, tell stories. To her <laughs> yeah, I was dressed up like this little sailor. I come out and like dance and then tell a couple stories and stuff about her and stuff like that. Oh and, my God, that's adorable. Are there pictures of this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's amazing uh, uh, oh. so, so like when i got older one of her friends was like hey i remember he would tell these stories they were pretty good uh he and he, he's like i guess he said he wanted to bring me to like a comedy show and she's like yeah sure he can go with you so i went and then the host is like and next up is uh stephen briggs and i was like oh man there must be like another stephen briggs in here and then this <laughs> man behind me is like go on up there young blood <laughs> <laughs> So I just waddled my way up there and then I just started telling some stories. And then after the show, a guy came up to me, he's like, Hey man, I want to book you for a spot tomorrow. And I was like, Oh wow. Okay. And I'm like, I guess I'll do this until I figure out what I'm going to do with my life. And I just never figured out what I was going to do with my life. So, Oh my God. What an incredible story. So questions, lots yeah. of questions. Do you remember the stories that you told when you first went up on the open mic and were you still wearing the sailor outfit? No, I wasn't wearing the seller off because I grew out of it. Okay, so, fair. Yeah, it was too much to tailor it to my size. It would have cost me way too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I was just wearing regular, regular clothes. Nice. Uh, nice. Then, uh, the stories I told, I think I just told some stories about my family, like uh, about my mom and stuff like that. Um, and, yeah. Just a yeah. couple of stories that I, I, I told before. And uh, and then after that, I started like doing like storytelling shows like The Moth and stuff like that. And okay. So, yeah, I like doing a lot of the storytelling shows. Like it feels like like uh, pure, I guess. And, and you know what? You do have a lot of amazing stories. I was listening to a couple podcasts that you were on, one of which your mom showed up and told oh, some yeah. stories as well. Oh, man. What? Oh, wow. That was so crazy. Yeah, what? my mom's just yelling. I'm like doing the podcast and I just hear, Steven! Steven! <laughs> and I was like, what is that? And it's like, Steven! I'm like, what the heck? And so, like, I opened my door. It's like, because I was, uh, the people that whose podcast it was, um, uh, Stephanie and Tom uh, Clark, they mm -hmm. uh, came to my place to record it. So I was doing their podcast. And so I'm like, hold on one second, guys. I'm like, I'm so sorry about this. And I look at the balcony. My mom's like screaming. She's like, I'm here. And I was like, what? You didn't even tell me you were coming. She's like, oh, I didn't. Can I come up? And I'm like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> And she comes up and then she just sees like a microphone and she's like, oh, let me tell you some stories. And so I'm like, cool, yeah. <laughs> she's oh, so wild. Like people sometimes don't believe some of the stuff I say about her. Like, like my mom is like, like the stuff she does like is regular to her, but it's really crazy. Like, like she got an argument with my brother and she pulled a gun out and shot it at him. <laughs> Oh my god and i'm like that's not normal but she's like well she's like he's pissing me off and i'm like well you could have shot him and killed him and she's like next time i won't miss and i'm like oh 
Oh my God. I remember she was telling the story about how she, I, she called him the boogeyman, but the guy that ended up, he tried to get into your yeah, guys' apartment. Yeah, tried to break in the house and kill her, yeah. And she was like, to you and- my mom's and- like from the Bronx, you know, she's like a Puerto Rican woman from the Bronx. So, you know what I mean? She's like very like, you know, like rough around the edges and stuff like that and just talk shit and stuff. Oh my God. Yeah, I- she's a correctional officer. So she worked in j- the jails, you know? So as a woman working in a jail, you gotta be kind of tougher, you know? Mm. Uh, so they can, the inmates can respect you, you know. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So, so she's always has like this edgy, like, ah, like you know, about her and stuff like that. Oh man, what yeah. a what an interesting experience. Yeah. And, and um, I was gonna say too, based on oh, and I was gonna say too, back to your childhood because you started out in the Bronx and then you ended up in California. Or no, you ended up in Texas going to military school. Yeah, military school, and then I ended up later on in California. Okay, because and military school because your parents making, caught you? Making counterfeit money. Yeah. I, I wish I was as smart as you when I was a kid. <laughs> I wasn't that smart. It was my friend's dad owned a printing company. So we had access to like all the stuff. The only thing I was able to come up with was that I was like, hey, we, we don't have any paper that feels like a real money and i was like how about we bleach a dollar bill and then reprint 20s on it and then he was like my buddy he knew how to use all the machines because it was his dad's company so he's like that's awesome so we we stripped these dollars and then reprinted on them and so you can't tell really you know what i mean you're like it feels real looks real like yeah it it was pretty good oh my god what did you guys end up spending your money on dude we, we were like scared people at first so we were just doing it like buying sandwiches and candy and stuff like that but then we got a little more brave and then we made uh fake ids and then we started going to strip clubs oh, <laughs> and we're my- like uh, because our thing was like they're not gonna like when you're throwing the money and stuff like that they're not gonna like pick up the money and put it to the light and be like is this really a 20 you know what i mean <laughs> Like they're the last ones to catch us. They're not oh. gonna. Catch us. Oh my god! How old were you guys? Fifteen? Yeah, fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, I think he was like sixteen, and I was fifteen. Yeah. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. They're looking at you. They're like, mm, twenty-one. Sure, why not? Yeah. Well, these are sleazy places that we were going into too. I, they're barely even checking IDs. They're just like, all right, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Oh, it looks like Rose has entered the room. Gonna, oh, right. Let's see. Or maybe she hasn't. Maybe she's the first. Hi. Oi. Hi, guys. Oh, what happened? Oh, my God. Sorry. I don't know what's going on here. No, no worries. Hey. The camera's always off, right? Your camera is off. Yeah, yeah I always do that. It's, that's because I don't go to college. These kids only know. That's the first thing they teach you in college. Camera, <laughs> yeah. camera you functionality. Do you do it do. Do you, do you don't want the kids to know. Oh, there it is. What's going on? Hey guys. How's it going? Did you say you don't? You when you take your college what? classes, you don't you don't show your face? Well, my son doesn't. My both of my sons use this computer sometimes and they don't show their faces at all. Oh really? Yeah, it's all there. I actually they're usually in the other room, and this is going on, and I can hear like everyone talking in the class, and the teachers just going on and on. Oh, okay, nice. Oh, but they did tell the prof- they did tell their teachers uh, that the camera broke on the computers. So. Mm. Oh okay. I should tell that to my boss. <laughs> they don't want anyone to see them. So much easier for children to masturbate in class now. Oh yeah, my they're god! Right in college. Yeah. <laughs> We had to be innovative. I mean, just rubbing our elbow yeah. against the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just rub your thighs together. <laughs> oh, the good old days. Speaking of the good old days, Rose, we were just talking about counterfeit money and how Stephen and his friend used to make it. And, nice. Uh, and what they would use for when they were 15 years old. Yeah. Did, nice. you, did you ever get into any shenanigans, Rose? Did you ever... Um, I actually knew somebody that had in trouble for that. <laughs> Oh, okay. okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to bring it down a notch, but no. Um, actually, somebody gave her some counterfeit money. She didn't know it was, and then she went to this bar to pay, and they're like, "You're giving us fake money." And she, she didn't know that. Mm. She didn't snitch though. That's good. 
That's true. That's true. But I, I seriously <laughs> doubt the bar cared who the, she got it from. They're like, tell us, tell us who you got this yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're oh, probably yeah. like, just get out of our bar. Yeah. yeah. She didn't really have anyone to snitch to. That's oh. true. Yeah. And speak about uh, talking about, you guys were talking about old stuff. What about beatboxing? Stephen oh, yeah. Briggs, beatboxer. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, S- Stephen Briggs, you also beatbox? Yes. Never and mind. he's I, bad ass at it. I did see he's a clip really of this good. actually. Yeah. <laughs> how how in the world did you get into beatboxing? Um, I was like on accident, like so, like with the storytelling, I kind of think about like how like you can. I think of it almost like a painting, and the more colors you have, the easier it is to paint the picture you want. The more colorful, mm-hmm. bright the picture can be. So I think of like everything as like with the storytelling it's like the characters the sound effects and the different things you can use to kind of like paint the picture more and so mm-hmm. that's what the reason why I started like thinking about sound effects but then like I remember when dubstep came out I could just do dubstep right away because my dad's voice sounds like dubstep like constantly my dad's like hey Stevie how you doing and that's <laughs> like that's dubstep right there pretty much <laughs> that is the same sound so I was immediately able to do dubstep right away. People are like, that hurts my throat. And I was like, well, I'm like, that's just the natural sound of my dad. So he <sighs> sounds like he eats like marble cigarettes for breakfast, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just chows him down. Yeah, that's his a- voice is insane. People are always like, whoa. Like he comes in, he's like, he's like hey, uh, he's like, <laughs> we'll go and sit in like a Denny's or something. He's like, you know, get me some coffee. And the woman's like, coffee? Like that. He's like, stop busting my balls and get me some coffee. <laughs> they're like whoa that guy oh my god yeah that's for a, a second like people thought my dad was like an ai made by elon musk because he sounds so- <laughs> oh my i have to meet this man that's <laughs> does he does he ever talk about the beat dropping does he my, my dad <laughs> he goes he goes he goes he goes stop making that stupid noise with your mouth <laughs> I feel like maybe if you do make songs, you could integrate his voice into the, make it like a chorus or something. <laughs> Give me some fucking coffee. Sorry, yeah. I don't know what he sounds like, but. <laughs> That's exactly what he sounds like. That's actually like a perfect impression. <laughs> That's what my dad sounds like too, surprisingly. So yeah, we're in line there. I oh, feel man. you, dude. Yeah, I... he's those, those old timey guys that like smoke cigarettes with no filter. That's perfect for dubstep who knew yeah, that's, that's, yeah if you want to get that voice i think that's how that's incredible and i i also just thinking about the paint the metaphor of the paintings and putting everything together i'd heard on another podcast where you were talking about when you're up in front of a crowd you are th- you're not thinking of like oh i'm bombing i'm doing well i'm doing this you're thinking of it as like a puzzle and yeah. so if you're seeing that they're not laughing at something that it's just the puzzle piece isn't quite fitting there and you're trying to constantly make it fit and yes. i think that is so cool and it's one of the i guess it stems from your unconventional upbringing and 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 rise to become a comedian because a lot of comedians see it as like oh shit i'm bombing it's not working they start to sweat get hot and uh it 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 seems like you take such more of a pragmatic approach and so i was going to ask does this bombing sensation ever come across to you where you're like oh my god this is not going well i gotta go out or you just like nope i'm gonna try and make this work and and keep going here yeah i don't i don't think about it like that because like uh i think that's just too much like pressure like especially if you're doing it like nightly like it's just too much right like, you think i think i don't know at least for me that doesn't help me to think like the, if they, i look at it as like i'm solving this problem on stage and uh i just am trying to fix like i said the puzzle piece and you're trying to get the piece to fit and then once that piece fits you can move on to the next piece and try to figure it out and as long as you you know make progress a little bit of progress every day i feel like you're moving forward and some like people are like oh i need to like kill every time or I, like they feel like pressure to but i i just think like it, it if you're like hitting it every time you're probably not stepping out of your comfort zone you're not trying hard enough you know what i mean difficult enough things mm-hmm. because you like 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 that's why i said the puzzle like you're not going to get a puzzle like every piece to land immediately you know when you're doing it like you sometimes you have to flip the piece around a couple times 
and get it to you figure it out and then but once you figure it out it's like okay cool and that's all that's all you can really do that and, and try to have fun on stage i feel the rest is like out of your hands you know yeah you, you put more pressure than that it's like you're making it into way bigger of a thing than you need to make it at least to me no yeah. i i think Sounds that's awesome a, yeah i agree and i think it's it's really cool so setting expectations lower on yourself being like i don't have to kill every time because i'm figuring things out so as you formulate your your set or um bits you're able to do that with a little bit less pressure, which is really cool to say. Yeah, you just, cause you're at, ultimately at the end of the day, you're trying to make something that you, you know, like maybe like a, like a, like a special, whatever, you know, that's something that's preserved and people can see it and stuff like that. So you're building towards that goal. You're not, cause the, different rooms are different, you know, laugh at different things. And, you know, if you're like always like trying to do like if, if I want like if I was just wanting to like get the biggest laughs every time all I would just improvise the whole show because right. that's a picture's worth a thousand words is the best saying you can use right there because when people can see what you're talking about to see the audience member that you're talking about or see this thing that you're talking about it's way easier for them to laugh than have to imagine what you're talking about so if you just want to like get like laughs every time just like it's an easy trick is just to improvise the whole time and like make mm -hmm. jokes of what, what people can see right there it's, e it's easier to get the laughs but mm -hmm. like you want to work on something and maybe it's like out of your comfort zone or you know some kind of like thing that's really like you know some stuff like really is like means a lot to you and it's harder to like see the funny in it so then so you just gotta play with it and play with it and play with it until you know you get it to a place you like it mm -hmm. yeah. i think a wonderful example of that is your serial killer bit where mm -hmm. <laughs> that's killing th at least three people so whoever killed jesus was <laughs> killed three people and and i felt like it, it seems to me you can correct me if i'm wrong yeah. but that may have required some work where you're stepping out of your comfort zone because even now you're anticipating okay I've I've sensed that people have not laughed at the one part and then you bring it back up and then they laugh and then you're like you should feel bad for laughing at that. So yeah. it's like this wonderful roller coaster and you're guiding them on like okay, here's where we're going and it's just so masterfully crafted. It seems like you had to have gone out of your comfort zone and tried different things to be able to construct that. Yeah, absolutely. And then if like I think like also like if you get too worked up about like if the joke doesn't work and you're like, oh, that joke bombed and you put too much pressure, then you like, what makes you want to go back to the well on that joke? But if you don't look at it, if you separate yourself from that and and not look at it as like, oh, it's all about me, I bombed on this joke. And you, you can separate yourself from that and just be like, okay, this is just like, whatever, like you see it as like something you're, I don't know, whatever you're making, like, like uh, baking something, you're trying the ingredients and you're like, ah, I gotta try it again. And maybe I try it and it, okay, eh, it's close, it's good, but it's not exactly how I want it. And just, you know, I think of it as like that. I separate it from anything about like me. It's more like just the joke about the joke. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I was going to ask about sketch comedy too and, and the sketches that you do because you've been doing a great job at that as well. Oh, thanks, dude. That's a different beast altogether where yeah. you're kind of working by yourself with your little comedy recipe to be able to put the ingredients in and be like this works this doesn't work but then with sketch if the more people you have and then there's also um i believe i heard you do video as well and yeah. editing and so all of it man we do it all <laughs> oh my god so i mean what's that like in terms of from what i've gathered from you you're very pragmatic and you like to experiment and you like to put different things together with sketch it's not like <clears throat> we can go out and make it again so yeah. what what is the process like are you doing multiple takes are you do you have different versions I, yeah I, I i've like i don't do that many takes now i used to do a lot of takes uh -huh. but it takes so long to make like these videos because like i do like a lot of special effects in the videos and stuff mm -hmm. so now i'm like we do a couple takes and that's it. We move on to the next shot. You know what I mean? Like three takes at the most. Let's move on to the next shot because it's like, what else like, are you going to do? Like, you know, it, yeah. if, if you couldn't get in three takes, I'm like, some people are like, I need a lot of takes, but I'm like, Hey, come on, let's just get it going. You know what I mean? I got to edit this after <laughs> eight hours to edit, you know? 
<laughs> I, I feel you. Not not necessarily from the sketch perspective, but like from podcasting. It, it yeah, takes... it takes a long time. And it's like, and if you're trying to consistently put out content, you know, you can't be, you know, the thing, the thing is like now I, I have like a good crew that I work with. So I feel like stand-ups like a like a solo sport and sketch is like a team sport, like you know, like sure. or something oh, like nice. that. Yeah. So it's uh it's it's a little like easier too to be like, okay, like you know, if you have good people around you too, they they just know how to like, improvise too and stuff like that. So you you give them like freedom and they trust you and they and you trust them. And I think that's the most important thing to trust. And you know, okay, cool, like that idea I like that. Let's try that really quick. Boom, and we just move quick. And then after I'll edit and I, sometimes I edit by myself. Sometimes I edit with my boy, uh, Noman, who I do a bunch of sketches with. And mm-hmm. the same thing with that. We'll be like, oh, what about this? I'll try this, that special effect. And we'll try stuff. And then, and then, you know, before you know it, you just keep on getting better at it. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. We're, now we start like making music, like that, that bidet thing. Like we recorded that song from scratch. We made the beat and everything. We recorded it. And we're not musicians at all, but we're just like, yeah, you're fun. Having fun like, we're and... making it for like for the tonight show and we're like you know jimmy fallon uh he likes to sing and do voices and stuff like that so we're like catering towards that style you know we're like yeah. let's push towards that style and see if we can get this on there so nice, nice. That's <laughs> I, I can't wait till you get your dad's voice in one of your songs that's oh, gonna be dude. that'd be that'd be amazing <laughs> the day no yeah uh... yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I so, can't sing a lick, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So what is, what, I was going to ask, what is the typical, I was going to ask day, but it seems like week might be a better question because you, with all the stuff you've got going on with touring and stand up yeah. and sketch, how are you able to get all of that done? Do you segment out? Do you have an agenda? Do you um, compartmentalize and, and categorize your, that's a weird word for it. Do you? organize your day for these different things or are you just like i gotta get this thing done and this thing done and this thing done by the week and i'm just gonna find the time to do it yeah it, it kind of jumps around because sometimes like like for instance, i just got sent earlier like a, a thing for an audition uh today and so i'm like okay i gotta work on that script so that's kind of like block out everything that i was gonna do after this like i kind of just dropped all that stuff so i'm just gonna work on that now so i kind of moved everything shuffled everything but i always start my day off like that kind of the same I, I wake up and I go straight to boxing and I go box for like an hour and a half. And then I go to cryotherapy, I freeze. And then after that, I start my work. Fuck. Nice. Okay, two questions. Yeah. Is that, because I saw you, your cover art of your album, Whiskey Dick, yeah. where <laughs> you did not have a six pack. And then now I saw it's a not recent hilarious. picture. It's not hilarious to have a six pack. <laughs> Well, that picture needed a, a dad bod. Wait, so did you did you get in dad bod form got for that? In dad bod for that picture. No way! You're like yeah. a comedian Christian Bale over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not as. And also, it would if I had abs, it makes it look like it's gonna be a porn or something. <laughs> like, I didn't want my album to look like a porn. I could increase sales. You never know. Maybe this sex sells. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Maybe damn, should. dude. So you got into dad bod form for the cover art, and then you got out of it. Yeah. <laughs> you're an inspiration and a source of envy because I have not been able to get out of dad bod form. So, <laughs> how, is it the boxing that is able to get you in tip top shape? Yeah, man. I think I think if you just like, uh, I, I don't like to work out every day. Like today I didn't want to get up and work out, but I was like, I just make myself, I get up and just go do it right away before I really can think about it. Like when I'm still kind of groggy and yeah. it, and it, when I, once I get there, I'm fine. It's, I think it's just the getting up and getting there. If you can get there to wherever you're going to work out, then you're going to be able to do it. But it's just that initial like start. And the thing is like, too, if you take too long of a break, it's hard to get back into it. So mm-hmm. I always suggest to people like eat, do something every day, even if it's like only 10 pushups, like just so your mind can go, oh, you're in the rhythm of it. You know, you're not breaking the rhythm. So that's how I think about it. That's really, really smart. I saw something yeah. on, on YouTube as I was procrastinating, trying to do <laughs> something saying, if you do two minutes of something, 
then that makes the idea of doing an hour of it or half an hour or whatever less daunting. So yeah. whether it's like the 10 push-ups, which could probably take two minutes or two minutes of if you want to learn piano, just practice for two minutes. Or if you want to write for just two minutes, if the idea of writing for two minutes is so easy that you and welcoming, you're like, okay, I can do this. And then it flows into half an hour or an hour. And I think that even breaks down to like we we're saying about like uh, working the jokes on stage. It's like you take all that the daunting feeling away and it, it's a little more, you know, I mean, you could be more relaxed and be more yourself on stage and stuff like that. Cause you're not mm -hmm. thinking, Oh my God, I, I gotta, I gotta kill. I gotta kill. Cause if you're thinking that it's like hard to be in the moment, like how could you be in the moment if you're like thinking I gotta kill. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I totally agree with that. I think that I feel like not enough comics harness that because yeah. I feel like a lot of them use the verbiage like, Oh, I bombed or, I didn't do well. And that mind frame of like, I have these expectations because if you bomb, you're thinking that you were going to just kill. And yeah. so having the expectation of like, I'm going in there, I'm going in the lab to experiment. Yeah. And I found a couple concoctions that were worthy of a chuckle. And some of them were worthy of a groan. And that's yeah. okay. I've just got to work over here. This is good. Right. Jot that down and then keep working at it. So yeah, I love that, man. Exactly. I love that. Last question before we get into the advice. I haven't done cryotherapy. Okay. What, and I'm curious about it. What are yeah. the benefits? Is it, well, yeah. Well, like what got you into that? So uh, I did it because I, I hurt my hand and, and I had a boxing match come on, coming up. And I, oh, okay. need, and, and I was like, I hurt my hand before and it didn't heal for like three weeks. And I was like, I didn't have the time to let it, like I need to be able to get back to boxing right away so I could not be out of shape the match and mm. so I was like what can I do because my hand swelled up and I can't close my hand and then uh someone re suggested go to cryotherapy and they'll like freeze your hand you could jump in the box and it'll freeze you uh, take away any inflammation and stuff like that I did that and after like four days I could use my hand again I was like sparring and stuff like that oh yeah so it really helped and then after that I've been doing it every day since Oh, I go every day. I go, uh, it's like negative 238 degrees. And I'm standing there for like three minutes and 30 seconds and freezing this box. And it's really freaking cold. Your body starts to hurt in there. But after oh, wow. that, you feel so good because it re releases endorphins while you're in there and stuff like that. I think it burns like 500 calories too while you're in there. Yeah. And it takes care of all the inflammation and stuff like that. My body just feels like even loose too, more loose. Like I feel like more like, like if I had any like aches or like I felt tight anywhere, it just opens up everything. And it's great, man. I just, yeah, I, I, I started thinking more about like, like, oh, like taking care of myself during this time and stuff like that. And, you know, it's good that you did that at your age because usually people do that in their like 40s. Mm. They're like, oh, I need to start taking care of myself all late in life. Yeah. So. You know what I like about it, it is that it, it's it's um it's a it's a goal that you can do every day. That's a little tough, but it's but it, so it makes you get some uh, resistance during the day. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. it's like it's not that long. Three minutes and thirty seconds, not that long. But like it, you're like, oh shit, I gotta do this. But you can get through <laughs> it. And you're like, okay, I got over a hump and it helps you get through the rest of your goals of the day easier. Yeah. For me, you know what I mean? It's a small like goal. Like, you know how some people are like, oh, make your bed every morning. And that's like mm -hmm. a small goal that helps you get to the rest of your goals. So this is like a more intense one that helps me go, okay, well, I did that earlier today. So if I have something else I'm gonna whine about, you know, I'm not gonna whine about it after doing that because that was more, that and, and boxing too. Like if I got like a sparring day or I'm working with some people and that's like, that stuff's way harder than the rest of the stuff I got to do for the day. So it's like, okay, I can't come really complain about the rest of the stuff because I did those. So are you boxing or is it like UFC style or, or is uh, it straight no, I, box? Yeah, I just box. I just, yeah, I just hit the bag and stuff like that and work out with a bunch of dudes out there. Uh, I love yeah, how you I, say. I'm not, trying, I'm not trying to, you know, accidentally break my arm or something like yeah. that. Yeah. You know? Damn. But yeah, I wrestled in high school though. But that that's like, you get injured a lot from that too, I think. What weight class were you in? I bounced around because I, I, I wrestled from like the beginning of high school to like the end of high school. So I, oh, okay. yeah, I, I grew as 
it went. But yeah, I mean, that's like really, I feel like that's wrestling's really rough on your body, especially your neck. Like you keep on getting your neck pulled and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I'm just like, I think I'm uh, at the age where I'm like, I don't want that anymore. <laughs> 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 I'm good. I'm good. Um, so what I know you do tour a lot and I was going to ask, how are you able to keep up with since boxing and, and the cryo are really beneficial? Yeah. What do you do in really cold showers and yeah, I do those too, man. Those are great. Yeah. You jump in there and you do that cold shower that, that helps too, man. That's something that's like, Oh, and then it's like kind of like annoying, but like, if you get, if you can do it regularly, it like will change your mindset. Yeah. I, you I was do that? A, you take cold showers. I do. I was a big fan of Tim Ferriss and Tony Robbins was on his podcast and huh. became a fan of his. And he was talking about the benefit of just a well cryo first off, and then ice cold showers, how it just yeah. shocks your nervous system and it gets you pumped and ready for the day. And yeah, absolutely. It, knocks the fog out of your brain. So Yeah. And then another thing that they were talking about was priming, which meditation a lot of people talk about meditation and i am not by any means denigrating the value of meditation but when i wake up in the morning i am so tired and so if i try and meditate i'll lull myself to sleep and so the priming it's like a little bit active and then you get to focus and so it wakes you up and shocks you a little bit and and allows you to be more mindful and focus priming is like what like uh it's like I would say it's like uh, a violent breath. meditation, not yeah, violent. It's like a big breath, right? Like, ah, like and, really big breaths. And then you, and for the first part, you do like three sets of 10 where you lift your shoulders up and you uh-huh. breathe through your nose where you go. Yeah. I do it in the backyard and my neighbors think I'm fucking insane. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's uh yeah, great way to wake up and meditate kind of or 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 concentrate focus yeah no I, I get it man breath work i think is like underrated like people you could do a lot like with the, your breath work you know what i mean because you know they say like when you go through the day you don't really take full breaths and stuff like that when you're walking through the day and stuff like that so if, if you're like uh cognizant of oh hey you know take some deep breaths during the day that kind of like resets you like you know you know yeah. And you just kind of like, you'll feel better. You feel, at least for me, man, I like, I'll do that sometimes. Like if I notice, like I'm getting a little too like antsy or something like that, I just take a couple of big breaths and stuff like that. And it kind of resets my brain and stuff like that and goes, Oh, okay, cool. Like I can uh, analyze everything a little more clear and not like with that, like stress, that monkey on my back. Yes. Yeah. 100%. And I just was looking at Reddit on the thread explained to me, like I'm five, the benefits of why deep breaths are beneficial for you. I didn't quite understand it. So I might have to go to the thread, explain to me like I'm four. <laughs> so, but there, there is science, there's um, scientific evidence of it benefiting you and making oh, you more yeah. calm. So anyway. I took see, a deep breath when I was getting a B12 shot earlier today. Oh wait, you get B12 shots also? Yeah, Once a week? Over, or? I had that over, I had that over and have them stick the needle right in my butt cheek. Like, uh, <laughs> in wait, the glute? This is new yeah. to me. What wait, 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 what is this? B12? Like the vitamin? B12? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. B12 and B complex like mix. And it's like the vitamins, like boom, that. Or have you ever tried Irish sea moss? No. Oh man, bro, you gotta get on the Irish sea moss. So it has uh, I believe it's 90, is it 92 of the 103 minerals our body needs for the day? Oh wow. Yeah. And so uh, the Irish used to use this back in the day when, you know, they for uh, su- supplement the, the food they weren't getting, you know what I mean? Uh, so they'd get the minerals and stuff like that. And then now these days it, it's uh, used at the, in the islands and stuff like that. And the, the women call it the love potion. They make it for their man. It gives their man energy, you know what I mean? To be able to get down. Oh, the, that yeah, nice yeah. virility. Okay. yeah yeah but so but i found out about it my buddy was talking about it because i was telling him like i was feeling more lethargic and stuff like that and he's like bro you gotta take this this will give you more energy and everything it's just a natural thing and he's, it's I, it's just irish it's sea moss and you soak it in water overnight and then in the morning it expands and then you blend it with some water it turns into a gel and you just take like two teaspoons or tablespoons of that into like a smoothie or whatever you can eat it straight but it just gives you a bunch of the minerals your body needs and stuff like that that you're probably deficient of. So yeah, I do the B12 shots too, though, because sometimes I'm deficient. Like that, so. 
That's incredible. I'm definitely, I just wrote that down so I can go shoot that in my ass later. <laughs> but, but I, I love that type of shit. Cause I, I also, I was a big fungi guy wow. where they, um, I heard this magic mycologist. Mushrooms? What was that? Magic mushrooms? No, not the. <laughs> oh, okay. I was no. like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't dabbled in those yet, but oh, okay. I They're was. Fun. Fun. I, Nice. I was, and I did hear about benefits of that too, but I, yeah. I heard this mycologist that was, he was on Joe Rogan, but I, I heard him on Ted talks and he was talking about these, these uh, cordycep mushrooms, okay. which they, they're sycophants. So they grow on top of the heads of caterpillars and eventually kill them. Oh, whoa. What they do is they actually give you more oxygen to your body. So they help. It's like a stimulant. So yeah. you actually don't feel it's like a shot of caffeine, except you don't have the crash afterwards. Oh and it's, yeah. And then it's also a, um, an aphrodisiac. So. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And it says Mushroom here game. about Mushroom Irish. Game is, is strong. Yeah. Yeah. And it helps prevent salmonella, um, Irish sea moss. Oh, okay. So I could just dig into that raw chicken. Yeah. Nice. I love that. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that's what I read. It says it uh, prevents, oh, it you prevents know, from you getting salmonella. You oh, never know. Wow. You need it, if you're eating at taco places all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love tacos. <laughs> mm. Nice. Oh, man. Well, we're going to dive into the advice portion of the podcast where we're going to answer some questions, Stephen. Before we do, I like to have an inspirational quote that gets us nice and jazz to be able to be inspired to answer these questions. But before I give mine, I like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that they cling to that help give them motivation during their dark days or when they're just not feeling like they want to do anything. Yeah, I mean, I've if this was like a, like a couple months ago, I would, my inspirational quote would have been to buy Bitcoin, but now it's too much. <laughs> I, it now. I, I just had Elon Musk on and he said the same thing. So oh. I was, <laughs> I, yeah, I was telling people about this a while ago and then all of a sudden it I'm like, dude, this thing's almost like $50,000 a coin. I'm like, Oh my gosh, dude. I ended up buying some back in 2017 yeah be because my mother-in-law uh -huh. she she has some pretty interesting theories yeah and i don't usually agree with them but to placate her i thought the bitcoin thing could work so i bought her some for her birthday oh, and wow. every year i would buy her nothing crazy like a 100 bucks yeah. and then i looked two weeks ago and i was like holy shit we uh we made some money here. Yeah, nice. you, flipped it. you flipped it. That's good, man. <laughs> so, yeah. So all the money's hers because I gave it to her. So yeah. I don't get That's shit. That's so cool. But yeah. So but now like whatever you gave her, it would, now you could be like, no, well, actually, this is how much I gave you. <laughs> <laughs> because you can it's gone so much. Like like that that hundred turned it well into like whatever five hundred or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be like, so I get I, the three hundreds yours, but then the extra thousand. You know, <laughs> hey, extra money, you know what I mean? It's like you know, playing at the gambling casino. You know, I give you some money, you make money off of it. You give me the money that you make, but you keep that money. You know, that's a good point. I might have to revisit the contract to see. If there are any <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's a great quote, Stephen Rose. Do you have any inspirational quotes you'd like to share? Um, no, I think that was a great one. I wish I would have done a lot of that. <laughs> oh, dude, seriously. I, I ended up buying Dogecoin too, but I don't know if that's- Oh, yeah? I, yeah, I mean, it's, what is it? It's like, it's at like 49 cents or something like that. I don't know what's that, but- Oh, I know it's, like, it's like four or five cents. Oh, it's right four now. or five cents. Okay, yeah, I haven't really looked into it, but I know all these people were talking about it. And I was like, I don't know. I gotta, I mean- they're, they're, I got to wait and see what's going to happen because I know it was made as a joke and now people are trying to be like, this could be a real currency, but also it's like, feels like a penny stock to me. That's yeah. That's kind of what I think too. So I put in, I put in like a hundred, 120 bucks in there right. when it was four cents. And, and I had some friends that put it in there way long ago and it was like 0 0.001 cent. So wow. They've got, I don't think they put in a lot. They put like 20 bucks, but yeah. still, 
Um, so I put in some money that I'm like, I don't, I don't care if I lose this. Yeah. Just in case. That's but- how you got to think about it. Like, you got to be like, I don't care if you're putting money that you're like, I'm not going to pay rent next to next month. Unless this- <laughs> Dude, yeah. if, you're, if you're doing that, like, uh, what's that movie that Ab Sandler just did? The diamond one. Oh, uh, oh, uh, fuck. Um, oh, I just saw it too. Oh my God. Yeah, if you but if you're know. gambling like that, then no, not good. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my god, it's gonna fucking bug me. Sparkly jewels, sparkly uncut gems. Uncut yeah, gems. Yeah, yeah. If you're uncut gemming it in these streets. <laughs> not, and that is not so me. true. That is so true. I know people that have gone to Vegas and they like take their mortgage. And my grandma they, wants her like, house that way. My grandma gambled her house away. Oh no. Yeah. You have it like, oh, I'm just going to spend it. But it's okay. It's okay. She's dead now. So, you know what I mean? She hasn't- <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> oh, God. Well, beautiful. Now that we're inspired, uh, I've got. <laughs> the, I, I've I mean, got what a- do you think she was homeless or something? Living on the street. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was worried. I was worried for a second. Now that she's dead, that's oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm relieved. All right, so I've got an inspirational quote. This is actually not by any person whatsoever. This is actually by a robot called Inspire Robot, and what it does is it uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to man or woman and interweave them into perfect inspirational quotes. Oh wow! So, yeah, well. Hold your your uh, applause until we read the quote. I'm trying to figure out if this. I was like, something. I'm just gonna use that thing to write my text messages now. <laughs> I'm like, I'm in a pickle. I'm like, come on, hey, uh, give me, put some of these words together and throw them into a text message. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be amazing. Right. <laughs> so, so this week, Inspirebot says, getting married can be to get a haircut. <laughs> Never mind. This AI has been fired. I'm not- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think it fully formed a sentence on that one. No. Getting married can be to get a haircut. I mean, could it be like, it, it's like getting a haircut, getting married? I Maybe. don't think so. No. I've never heard, I've never seen a haircut ruin someone's life. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, yeah. that may have been me. <laughs> yeah. I feel. I feel like a haircut is more... Mm, it's more powerful than one might think because well, yeah, I can see what you're saying. Because if you go, if you are getting married and, or, or you have a big event and you're like, I'm going to get my hair cut. If you do it day of, that's like putting all your money in Dogecoin because you don't know if it's going to turn out good. You don't know what's going to happen. And then you're stuck with the consequences for. Well, I mean, you don't, have, you don't go to someone that you do you not go to a regular hair stylist. Do you, or do you switch it up every time? And then you're like, like, I don't know how good this person is, but I'm going to just go and throw the dice. Yeah. I just play Russian roulette. Oh, really? I, just I go, go to a different person. Really? No, I, so what you I take do. It serious. <laughs> I take them serious. Yes. Yeah. There you go. So it's you. Mm-hmm. Marriage would be. I guess well, I, I guess think sit marriage more serious than you do. I don't know. But that, yeah, I was saying. I've never I'm, been married, but I I guess I'm finding out about myself that I take like, very man. seriously. Yeah, my my wife should not hear this part of the podcast. But <laughs> I go to the barber, and then I never call them again after the haircut. It's just. <laughs> oh, like, but is it the same barber, like the same place, no, or is it different? Same person. He just goes to whatever. He wherever, wherever yeah, he's at, whatever you know. It's, it's, a, clips. He's eating at. it's a one cut sit that's what happens they cut it and then i'm like well look at the time i better be going They're like you don't want to stay around for uh you know the beard i'm like no 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 i gotta get out of here and then, <laughs> that's it so yeah maybe it is like marriage I, i've fallen asleep so many times while getting my hair cut oh i <laughs> your reaction oh <laughs> I well, that's a lot of trust. You see, yeah. that's because you have a barber that you go to regularly, and you trust. But I've been them. doing this for years. Oh God! See, I yeah. I feel so stiff when I go to the barbers because I don't know what they're gonna do. If I might accidentally move, or if I snore, if it might have them nick my ear, or well, something. here's what happened. I did it. Uh, I started doing it in the beginning. Uh, by pretending I was asleep so I wouldn't have to talk to the barber. (laughs) But then I started really falling asleep. 
I I think there's some sort of moral to that story where it's like if you set your mind to something you can do it well because they remember everything that you talk about dude so they follow up they're all hey did you break up with that guy did you go on that date what happened with that lady or i don't know whatever they remember everything yeah i don't want to have i don't want them to have all that you know that stuff on me (laughs) dude that's if i ever i don't you don't need a pi to find dirt on somebody just find their barber and then be like yeah exactly i don't want my barber to have all that that dirt and filth on me yeah (laughs) good one wait so steven you have a regular barber but you don't tell him anything no okay regular barber and i don't tell him nothing if this is like just you want your hair blonde cut (laughs) yeah i I don't no i just let him cut it i don't let him do anything Uh, oh yeah yeah my friend zoe does this oh okay so she yeah she comes over to my place and does this and I do the exact same thing I do to the barber. So I just pretend that I'm asleep with her. <laughs> it's a good friend too. And you- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, so tell me a little bit about how was your day? Oh. And I'm just like. <laughs> 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 oh, that's wonderful. Oh man. Wait, Rose, do you go to the same barber? Do you have. A you same hairstylist? Yeah. yeah, women so, yeah but, it, but he's my brother. Oh, okay. So I might as well just do it myself because he totally like man- manhandles my hair and then I have to blow dry it and rinse it. I have to do everything practically. He just puts man the dye in. It? What does that mean? Well, he like, like he's not careful like he is like with his other him. clients. <laughs> he's just like, <sighs> and I'm like, ah. oh, wow. and my hair is like wet and I have to blow dry it and style it. It's just, yeah, I should just go to someone else. See? <laughs> Yep, this is the problem when you know a family member tries to do something for free for you, and then yeah. they worn down. Yeah, and I do. I can't can. even charge you, girl. He's like, anywhere else you'll get charged this, and I'm like, yeah, they're not gonna punch me in the face. Like one time he was what, trimming my like, face while he's cutting your hair. Yeah, like, and he went oh, like, still he was because because he likes to um he uh my appointment is when he has real appointments, so he's just kind of like, you know doing my hair really fast and paying attention to these other people. And so you're like, like the side piece of appointment. Yeah, exactly. Not he, like, to be weird. He punched me one time on accident. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. I Rose, know. you need to see a separate hairstylist. <laughs> yeah. Because if yeah, he I accidentally. So. I think you need to go to someone else because. Yeah, I do. I do. If yeah. he accidentally punched you and he has but scissors I'm lo- I'm and loyal. sprays. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a loyal person. So like, I feel like he'll be mad at me if I go somewhere else. And then he'll make fun of my hair and that. I well, have dead ends and how how dead ends <laughs> I have dead, my hair has nowhere to go I I feel like you might be madder at him if you have to wear an eye patch for the rest of your life because <laughs> yeah. you got stabbed yeah, that's, yeah imagine if you're like this and you're just like still in his chair and I'm like, yeah, what are you doing? You're like I, I have loyalty <laughs> I know I know I and, do uh, I I, 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 I will, even time, through like, like the pandemic I wouldn't or through loyalty. the quarantine here in Phoenix I would not go to anyone else for my lashes oh. it was really weird Oh man, you got to I know my dominatrix that uh, her, the person that she was with, he wouldn't go anywhere for lashes either. So <laughs> just can't do it. Oh man. And I look well, crazier than me. Well, now that we're all inspired by that quote, <laughs> I feel like we can go into the questions. So we've got this first one. It's found by my fan, Ian. Thank you, Ian. And the question's found from Reddit. It says, cleansing a bedroom of really negative energy. We have a room in my college house that every person who lives there seems to change completely as a person, like becoming mean, extremely messy, almost manipulative. And we feel that room has to have something wrong with it. What are the best ways that we can cleanse it? Sincerely, room and gloom. <laughs> Rose, you want to take this one? Or you want me to take this one? Go for it. <laughs> okay, so I grew up, I grew up in, in a family. My mom did a voodoo. So I, that's oh no way thing. yeah so you like kill a chicken blood and stuff like that throw vodka in the room and stuff like that yeah and stuff like that so yeah 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 so I mean that's the way I know how they cleanse or maybe dirty the room I don't know however you want to look at it has you know voodoo have you ever did voodoo work on anybody I, I don't know I'm not I'm not part of the voodoo community I they got <laughs> started laughing one time 
I, I, I've never heard of it as the voodoo community, but yeah. now I feel like, oh God, I'd love to I see know, the, now the I'm like, voodoo. Yeah, I got, they got mad because I started laughing one time and then I made fun of one of them. And then they, they're, my mom and her community of voodoo, voodooettes, they weren't happy. <laughs> the voodooettes. Yeah, is yeah, that, they were is, real mad. Is that the <laughs> newsletter? This is the weekly voodooettes. Yeah, the voodooettes were upset, <laughs> man. Is it, do they actually call it voodoo, or do you call it voodoo because they do just weird things? It's voodoo, yeah. Damn, sure. dude. Wait, yeah. so to cleanse a room, they would do blood and vodka? I don't know exactly what they were doing. Oh. So I didn't really get, like, I didn't want to be, like, involved in a lot of it because it's, like, fair. Kind of like yeah, he's kind of crazy, but um, yeah, when I was a kid, like she would take me over to these, uh, my mom, like, uh, and my, my grandma only speaks Spanish, and so mm -hmm. a lot of like friends and family we know only speak Spanish, so my mom, on my mom's side, so we'd go to these places, and it'd be like this place where like, you know, these women that only speak Spanish, and they'd start doing some weird stuff in there, and I just like, yeah, you know, and she, but she's like watching me, you know, because my parents are divorced, so you can't like, so I had to go with her to these things. <laughs> yeah yeah and then i and then they stopped letting me go in the room because i kept on like laughing and doing weird stuff and i was like i'm doing weird stuff you're doing weird stuff i was gonna say the irony of the voodettes kicking you out because you were being weird yeah they're like they're like you were the awkward one <laughs> he's not taking this seriously <laughs> <laughs> oh my wow. god wow okay so i mean that and my could... mom apologized to the rest of the Voodettes because she was a poor me because she was scared they were going to cast something on me. So she's oh. like, to them. Well, she protected you. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Dude, so what was, did they have a, a meeting and they were like, all right, Voodettes, first order of business. <laughs> Here's the list of the people we want to curse. And then they would. Yeah, they would people. meet up and do like weird, like rituals and stuff. Like to keep a man or to pay him back for cheating on him and stuff like that? I, like, I was really, like, little, like, when I'd see this and stuff like that. So I wasn't, like, I didn't fully comprehend everything that was going on. I didn't even know what it was when I was younger. And then I found out older, when I got older, because my older brother told me what was going on. Yeah, and he's like, oh, they were doing voodoo and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, wow. Because he, like, grew up more, like, with that side of the family and stuff like that. So he knows, like, what was going on and stuff. So, and he's older, so they're more willing to tell him what was going on. Yeah. That's like kind of how like I found out like what was going on. But as a kid, like you're just kind of like, what the heck? Wow. So your brother knows the voodoos and the voo don'ts, but <laughs> <kind> of... <laughs> oh god. All right. Magical. Well, okay, voodoo, that's a good thing. I was gonna say sage. I think mm -hmm. I don't know what type of practice that is, but yeah. I think yeah. that's an energy clearing type thing. Yeah. But, yeah, sage is good. I see a lot of people use sage. People love sage. Yeah, they're just sage is expensive. I was with Bro. this girl. She's like, she's like, she's like, want to buy some sage? I was like, to clear this room. And I was like, I'll buy the sage. Yeah, sure. And I was like, damn, the sage is like, I thought because it's just a bunch of sticks and tw twigs and stuff. I thought it was gonna be like for this big bundle of sage. I thought it was like what made five dollars. I think it was like thirty bucks. What? Yeah. 30 Oh my God. But I'm in LA. Maybe I didn't. And also they probably just knew I didn't know nothing about Sage. So I couldn't oh. haggle them down. Maybe, maybe. Cause I don't know what the going rate for Sage is. So Dude, I was like, if you, you look at your guys reaction, I got, I got bamboozled. Bro, you got, got, you <laughs> I got, yeah, I got, got. Oh man. Cause it's usually um, somebody will give you Sage. Like if you, you know, purchase a new home or you move into a new yeah. place. Oh, I just noticed I probably should have turned this light on the whole time. Huh? oh no we'll fix it in post that's fine oh yeah. okay do you want me to turn it off now <laughs> no, no no i'm kidding i'm kidding that's fine yeah it's good okay, i didn't realize i didn't because i couldn't see mine the whole time and i just realized like i was just like i look like one of those mafia guys giving an interview because my face is all <laughs> <laughs> i know i was like yeah he's incognito over there it, <laughs> it was light i think the natural light in the room the sun started to set and then you started to look like yes my mother she used to do voodoo and then yeah 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 <laughs> But, I know somebody that um, their mom would, because she would like sneak out and her mom found out and she like locked her in a room and she like was sprinkling holy water on her. She's like, ah. oh, my mom's she's all playing into it. Like, ah. 
My mom, my mom used to do that when the people, like when the kids would go to bed, she'd take holy water and throw it on them when they were going to bed. My yeah. mom, she would spray the, she would flick the holy water on our house to bless the oh, house. Wow. That was like Catholic sage, I think. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, that might be that might be the one right there for the answer. Oh man, there we go. Cat, you know what? Dip the sage into holy water. In holy water, but then you won't be able to light the sage. So then it totally negates using sage. Oh shit! I didn't think about that. Yeah. Okay. Well, can you substitute holy water for like holy gasoline or something? So that way it's flammable. No, you don't I mean, want to. That the whole sounds like KKK, fire. like burning a cross or something. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Nope. Nope. Okay. <laughs> All right. They call Man. it holy gasoline. <laughs> backpedaling, backpedaling. All right. We've got this next segment that we're going to move into called positive spin. And so what this is, is sometimes when bad things happen to us, we start to think of negatives. And so instead of doing that, I have a segment where I'm going to present a bad scenario and we're going to try and think of positives so that the next time a bad thing happens, we can think of the positives and be able to overcome those obstacles that was a v very long segue into the segment but hopefully you guys are still holding on and ready for the ride so steven and rose you guys car breaks down okay you're like shit i don't have i didn't invest in bitcoin so i don't have enough money for yeah. a new one but your friend says don't worry i've got a vehicle that you can use it's a little unorthodox it's actually a side. It's a motorcycle with a sidecar. Okay. So that's what you have to drive all around town. Rose left the room, so she doesn't like that. She loses the game. Steven, you still got a chance. Okay. So first of all, because my car is broken down a bunch of times. I've had cars break down all the time. So I got to know what, what happened to my car, first of all. It blew. Somebody left too much sage in there, and it just caught on fire. The coal, oh, the car, like, melted. The car melted. It's, so it's not even the car is ab uh, incinerated. In abs obliterated. It's oh, wow. Okay. The, the like energy car. is clear because it was sage that burned it down. Yeah. So it's in a good spot. It's probably going to heaven, but yeah. it's done. Dude. Well, then I would count my lucky stars that I have an M1 license, a motorcycle license. <gasps> and be like, this works out. I've been want, I've been wanting to get a motorcycle for a while, but I haven't. This is this is the perfect. This was meant to be, and I would take that motorcycle with the sidecar, and I would drive around. Amazing. And what yeah. you know, there are so many things that you could use the sidecar for. I think groceries, man. You cannot ride a bike. And then go to the grocery store and bring your groceries back. You know how hard that is? You need to have that side cart to put your groceries in. Because if not, you're never going to have groceries. You're only going to be able to put a backpack and put like a carton of, uh, like a thing of milk in there, a gallon of milk, some orange juice, some quinoa, and whatever else, you know, go to the snack you want after that. That's it. Maybe some kombucha, I guess. I don't know. Oh, yes. Probably some booch. But other than that, it's a light yeah. load in a bike. Wait, what else are you going to fit in there? Nothing. You're going to be taking 12 trips. Dude, you could go to Costco and you could fill that sidecar, but that not the bike. Car, yeah, you can you can fit enough groceries in there, and then you're you're good to go. God, that's beautiful. Yeah, and and you, also a date, you could take a, a date. date. You could take a date. You, you could yeah. There's well, you could do with just a regular motorcycle. You could do a date too because they could get on the back. That's but, true. But you could put someone on the back and then put someone on the side if you're like a you know a swinger or something like that, or you're into three ways, you know. Oh, a menage a trois. Ah, yes, exactly. So, oh. you know, now the bike has turned into, you know, a thing for three. A, tr a trike. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I love that. And then you put your favorite on with you and then the side piece you put in the side piece. Yes, yes. I think yeah. so. I think that would work. All right. Well, that all worked out. Rose, hope you're doing okay. We're going to move on to the last question. This one, it's found by our fan, Paul. Thank you, Paul. He found it on Reddit. It says, <clears throat> do I offer kissing advice or not? I had a date last night, a few years older than me in early 40s. We've had video and phone chats. He came over last night for the first time. He was the worst kisser, holding my head like a clamp and attacking me with his tongue out as he approached my face. I tried to be diplomatic. Try it like this. I like it that way. Relax. Let me kiss you, etc. Finally, I faked being tired and sent him home. I'm frustrated by dating during a pandemic. Lonely and horny. 
I seriously would have slept with him if it wasn't for the horrible kisses. I want to tell him why I asked him to leave in hopes of him learning, taking the hint, and finding a future partner. Should I tell him? Sincerely, kiss and tell, or not to tell? Yeah, well, if this person's just looking for sex, kissing doesn't need to be involved for sex, so they can still have sex with that person. Yeah, I think we should definitely take a Yui and then just shit on the, the question asker right here because I feel like they didn't think this through. If you're, obviously you're frustrated, but you should have thought, you should have had that pragmatic Briggs mind and, and thought, okay, do I need the lips to do the coitus? Well, if, you need, if you need the kisses, you know what I mean? Which, I mean, I get it if you need kissing and stuff like that, but uh, you know, <laughs> look, like, uh, well, this this person just needs to tell the other person how they want it done. Like, don't be scared. Just tell them exactly what you want. You know, you're not if you're not gonna get what you want if you if you don't tell the people or the person what you want. Exactly. Do you go? Do you go to a restaurant and you're like, surprise me? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You just gotta be straight up with the people. You know, exactly. like hey, like I don't like the way you're kissing. Maybe don't try to bite my bottom lip off. <laughs> Don't hold my head like a clamp and then attack. Yeah. Come at me with your tongue. What is wrong? He came. And, and I can't imagine. Like, <laughs> is that how he came in? Was he this crazy? That, that might be beyond repair. Because yes. I don't know. And I just feel like also, too, it's like, okay, well, okay, he doesn't know how to kiss, but he's probably very, very nervous, too, right? He might be a nervous guy. Maybe... You know, that also lets you know that he's not a slut. He hasn't had a lot of experience. Right. If, if he's kissing you like Justin Timberlake, you know, then uh, <laughs> he probably has a lot of, and is, is that going to make you feel weird that he's had a lot of experience? You know, you got to look at the positive side of the coin. Oh, this guy, you know, doesn't have a lot of experience, but he, he, I can mold him into what I want. Agreed. Looking at the positive side of the Bitcoin is really important in this part. <laughs> and... I was going to, so Steven, yeah. I have not had, I mean, I'm no Justin Timberlake, obviously, yeah. but I have also yeah. not had many women kissers that have been bad. You know, so I, 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 this may be a generalization, but I feel like women might be better kissers than men, or maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the bad kisser in this scenario, but have you had experienced a lot of bad women kissers? Um, or is it a guy thing? Because I'm gonna I ask think, Rose. I think guys, you know what it is? I think guys' standards are lowered. We have lower standards than women. So even if a girl wasn't a good kisser, we're not, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> I uh, I 100 percent like, agree. Because... And also, like what like to us, what a bad kisser would be would be like I, I don't know, so like she's headbutting you instead of kissing <laughs> the only way like no matter what else she does like it's like it's oh that was no that was fine that was perfect yeah that that's true because we don't really talk about it so we don't know how to even describe things that go on because i don't go yeah. with my boys to coffee yeah. the next day and they're like bro did you get some how was the kiss did she yeah. kiss her no, that just doesn't happen. You so. rarely hear a guy complain about like the situation. It's like if, yeah. if 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 everything happened, then we're happy, we're satisfied. We're like, oh, we we got all the, okay. There's kissing, a hookup. Oh, you know, it was it was exactly. great. No, no guy's ever like like, oh my god. I mean, she definitely didn't know what she was doing in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> You're like what? Like, <laughs> yeah that is definitely not a thing no it's either yeah we hooked up or no we didn't there's never like go into details and be like ah oh, this is so awful like Ag agreed i'm Ag putting me around and trying to put me in doggy style uh. <laughs> <laughs> now on the uh rose on that point have you experienced a lot of bad male kissers well, I mean, I guess, yeah. Well, yeah, it's important to women. Okay. I think. I had a feeling sure. you could say that. Yeah. It's what all about if, that vibe, and you're like, oh. What so, if, yeah, that's definitely important, but I guess not for men. <laughs> what What have been the biggest complaints on your side? What is? What uh, I think, ew, like just. Uh, this is one I hear from women a lot. She's like, I was kissing the guy and she's like, we're going to kiss. And then I open my eyes and he's just looking like, <laughs> dude, 
Dude. Like oh. eyes open. <laughs> I've heard about this multiple times where a woman was like, and I was just so repulsed and turned off because like, what he's like, that's like a serial killer. Like why is he looking at <laughs> Like. <laughs> you, oh my God. You go. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh God. He won't close his eyes. What does he think I'm going to get away with what's going on here? <laughs> Oh my God. You know what? My wife and I, my wife makes me watch the bachelor now and yeah. the bachelor right now in this current season does that. And he opens his eyes as he's kissing her. Oh really? And my wife is like, he, kn I know he's going to find the one when I see him close his eyes, when he actually makes out with her. Cause every Dude, other one is like, I think that's weird too. That he, he, yeah. <laughs> she thinks it's weird too. Right. Super weird. Bro, Super weird. You think that's weird when the guy keeps his eyes open? Yeah, that is pretty weird. Yeah, weird. that's the one right there. That's the one I always hear women say. Like, like I liked him until I saw this dude kept it. I'm like, but he got baby blue eyes. And they're like, <laughs> oh, I don't want the ocean that close to me. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I don't want to drown in his eyes. Yeah, Jesus. yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to feel the breeze. Come on. <laughs> God damn. That's so, now that I think about it, that's such a good observation. My wife will fuck with me, too. I, <laughs> I'm not a fan with it. But we'll be making out, getting ready for some steamy, steamy time and then she yeah. I, I open my eyes to just make sure that i'm in the right spot you know yeah. re uh reorienting myself and then i see her and she's like that. <laughs> so creepy like, it, it, it is like if i was kissing a girl and then i open my eyes and she just had her eyes open i wouldn't think of anything about of it i'd be like whatever but yeah i try to weird to us right exactly I don't know. exactly well but i she... can understand why it's weird to women though yeah yeah you're just like holding your head and like <laughs> <laughs> like eating you like a lion yeah, yeah, yeah. Rawr, rawr. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he's studying you or something like his head turned like looking at you like that very yeah i can see why yeah for oh, sure God. <laughs> that's the weird thing is i think a lot of people no never mind i was gonna say i think a lot of people close their eyes when they eat but i don't think that's true Sometimes, like, I guess when there's a good bite, I'm just like, mm. yes, same, same. The initial bite, too, I go. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, right. I'm all about that. That initial bite, eyes closed, because I got to respect the, you know, the burger. It's almost like I'm making out. Because you don't want the burger to go back to the other burgers and be like, he was an okay eater, but he was yeah, opening yeah, his eyes exactly. the whole time. He gets his eyes off when all oh, that. <laughs> looking at my buns. <laughs> <laughs> oh all right speaking of buns it's time to <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad transition but it's the end of the podcast so i wanted to say huge thank you to both of you guys steven we'll start with you huge thank you for for guessing on the pod and i wanted to ask what have you got going on what would you like to plug uh let her rip uh, i'm doing El Paso comic strip, strip this week. Um, nice. This week I'm doing uh, Loonies in Colorado Springs. Uh, got a bunch of, I'm dropping sketches and videos every day. So that's on YouTube, Instagram, at Stephen Briggs Comedy. And that, yeah, that's what I got going on right now, man. Nice, beautiful. And Rose, do you have any shows coming up or anything? Any, any oh, place I've got a few. You? Yeah, I've got like this rooftop comedy at the Clarendon Hotel. That's nice um get it rose like march 5th and then uh doing like the up uh, this bar called the tap room 1222 tap room so it's fun hmm. hosting them having fun beautiful and, and, drinking beer, I guess. and uh, listeners if you're like oh my gosh it's so much stuff how am i gonna keep up just go to the show notes take it take a deep breath burn <laughs> some sage burn <laughs> some blood vodka the cheap and sage holy cheap water yeah, yeah, yeah. The or voodoo. Stage. Whatever floats your your spiritual boat and then go to the <laughs> show notes and it'll all be there. So you can click, follow, go buy tickets, whatever. Ah, <sighs> well, this was beautiful. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, for, thank for you for having me. Really appreciate it. And what you what do you got going on? Don't you want to tell the people what you got going on? Oh, you know, Steven, you're you're better at this than I am. Guys, <laughs> if you if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe, leave a rating, review. Follow me on Instagram at a comedy advice podcast and 
I have a live show coming up in April. So stay tuned for deets on that. Nice. Yes. Oh, and um, I, uh, that's all. Yeah, I will nice. be cleansing this room with sage and vodka and making out with my <laughs> eyes open. But other than that, <laughs> buy Bitcoin, people. Buy Bitcoin. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, this was beautiful. Um, if you want to stay on for like 30 seconds after we say goodbye to the audience, yeah. it'd be awesome. Audience, you guys have been great. Look at you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll talk at you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.